Hello everybody, Curious Corduroy here, and today I have a phone review for you guys, and that is the Droid 3 by Motorola, available only on Verizon. Now I'm actually upgrading from my Droid X to my Droid 3, and uh, the reason why I'm upgrading is because I started to have a lot of problems with my Droid X. Now uh, some of the problems I was experiencing was my phone getting hotter than usual, my Wi-Fi not working, uh, losing reception, I would lose my bars and I wouldn't get any signal at all, and uh, the phone actually shut down and restart itself. That started out at maybe once a week, but then it got to the point where my phone would shut down three times a day, all in one day, and just restart itself randomly, which can get really annoying. So I'm gonna miss this phone, it really is a good phone, uh, I would have kept it if I was able to roll back to the uh, previous version of Android's OS but sadly I was not I was stuck at gingerbread so I was stuck with my problems so I figured hey I'm eligible for an upgrade let's move on to the next phone so I chose the Droid 3 now uh, I'm just gonna talk about the physical features first of the Droid 3 before I get into all the technical specs on the insides of this phone now the phone actually has a 4 inch QHD screen. Now QHD actually stands for one quarter of 1080p, which is the full high definition that you can get. The QHD resolution on this phone is 960 by 540, which as I said before, is exactly a quarter of 1080p and three quarters of 720p. So what that pretty much means in English is that this phone is going to look pretty nice. And the screen actually does look pretty nice, but I'll get to more of that in just a second. Now another thing is this phone is actually pretty heavy. It looks like two phones stacked on top of each other with this being the top phone and this being the bottom phone. Also, it has a full QWERTY keyboard that it's got to support, which also adds heft. But personally, I like a heavy phone because when I hold something like the iPhone 4, which my friend actually has, Impulse, uh, I feel like I'm going to break the damn thing every time I'm holding it. I, I just can't get a good sturdy grip on it. That's what she said. But this phone is very heavy. And uh, like I said, a lot of that is due to the screen and also this pretty nice full QWERTY keyboard. Uh, that I'll show you in a second as well. Now, unlike the Droid X, which I was used to, the Droid X actually has these clicky buttons on them, which I really like. Uh, I didn't have to press the top of the phone to interact with it to awake it from sleep. I could just use these clicky buttons, which I call them, and uh, that would activate the phone. But if you're a previous Droid owner, Droid 2 and the first Droid, you'll know that there is a touch interface on the bottom of the phone, unlike the Droid X's uh, physical buttons. It takes a little bit of getting used to, but I actually do prefer the uh, touch interface buttons because I don't have to worry about scraping uh, the keys or I don't know the keys falling off because uh, some people complain that it can make the phone look cheap. I personally didn't have a problem with the way the, the clicky buttons were. Uh, I like them, but I'm pretty okay with this as well. Now we can get to just the basic stuff. Uh, on top, of course, is your on, off, or standby button. On the right of the phone is your volume buttons, your up and your down, that's pretty self-explanatory. USB slot, and you have a micro HDMI slot, much like the Droid X does, which means you can hook this up to a television. Speakers right here. Now one of the cool features is that the Droid 3 actually has two cameras, a front-facing camera, as well as the back facing camera. You can take eight megapixel photos as well as six megapixel photos, which will come out in a widescreen format. That's widescreen. Also, the video taking capabilities are full 1080p HD video as well as 720p HD video. I don't know why I keep hitting the phone repeatedly like this. Uh, in terms of video quality, it looks pretty solid. If you're in a well-lit area like this or possibly outside, uh, your photos are going to come out looking great, uh, whether it's 6 megapixel or 8 megapixel. Your photos are going to look fantastic. Now, in terms of the video quality, uh, it's actually not that bad. It's pretty much on par with something you would find on a Flip HD camera or uh, even what I'm using right now, a Kodak ZIA HD camera. Uh, of course, if you're in well-lit areas, the video is going to look nice. But if you're in low light, the video is not going to look as good. Same goes for the picture taking qualities as well. Also, the flash can kind of overpower uh, your photo that you're taking. Uh, so if you're in a dark area, um, use the flash as a last resort. Try to find some good lighting around uh, because the flash can really overexpose your photo. Now the camera also has an eight times zoom. So that means you can zoom in uh, eight times. It's also got an LED flash, which I told you guys about. It also has autofocus, which is actually really nice. Now the thing about the video capturing is that it's not at 60 frames per second. It stays at a steady rate of 30 frames per second. That's not so bad if you're using something like a Kodak or a Flip. But on the phone, it's really noticeable when you're using uh, the video taking qualities that it's at 30 frames per second. At times it can slow down and look a little bit laggy, but uh, other than that, it is pretty solid video quality, especially for it being on a smartphone. Um, the speakers are actually something that really shocked me. The speakers sound phenomenal. Uh, compared to something like the Droid X, the Droid 3 is just blowing the sound system of the Droid X out of the water. 
Now I'll actually get to the QWERTY keyboard just to show you guys. Just take your thumb and you flip it up right there and there is your QWERTY keyboard, which is actually really nice. Oh, there's, there's Allison Hayslip. I just wanna say first of all, Allison Hayslip is a total hottie. She is my wallpaper background, if you guys can check that out right there. Total hottie, and she's the real deal, legit, like, nerd. And she's, I just, if you can't tell, I really like Allison Hayslip. But back to the full QWERTY keyboard. QWERTY. I think that's pretty cool. Well, anyway, the QWERTY keyboard works very nicely. Now, in terms of the keyboard, uh, it's a very good keyboard. Buttons are very responsive. You can actually hear them. They're very clicky. There's a nice rubbery finish. What did, what did I do? And uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. You got all your keys that you need, all your letters, your uh, your enter button, your OK. Uh, one of the cool things that I like is the actual, I think it's the first droid, actually had this weird D-pad looking thing right here. Uh, but starting with the droid 2 and the droid 3, you actually have directional pads, uh, directional keys right here to do some of your navigating on the web or even playing uh, flash games, which is really nice. And perhaps one of the coolest new features is the fact that you don't have to hit Alt in another letter to uh, get to your numbers. There's actually a dedicated row of numbers, one through nine and zero at the end, which is very, very handy, and you use it a lot more than you think you would. Now let's talk about the insides of the phone, the actual meat of the phone. The phone has a one gigahertz dual core processor, as well as 512 megabits of RAM. Now in English, that pretty much just means that this phone is fast and it is a beast. It can handle a lot, especially YouTube videos. Uh, something like my Droid X would take minutes upon minutes upon minutes to load in a, a video on YouTube that wasn't even in high quality. But with the Droid 3, I can actually watch videos much, much faster. They actually load in under a minute uh, all the way through, which is very nice. It's a very fast phone, uh, not as responsive as I'd like. Uh, I know a lot of people are complaining about Moto Blur, uh, but personally, I don't seem to have any troubles or problems with it. Uh, it runs pretty well on my phone. I don't have uh, any glaring issues with it. Occasionally it can be a little bit laggy and the screen itself is actually not as responsive as I'd personally like it to be. But occasionally you will hold something on the, the home page and you'll tap it down but you don't hit it hard enough so all you do is select the icon rather than actually going to it. In terms of the look of the screen it actually looks pretty good. Of course you can always uh, change your brightness to your your specific needs. Having your brightness up too far will actually kill some of your battery, which is actually pretty self-explanatory and pretty well known. But other than that, I personally have no problems with Moto Blur. Uh, there's the occasional lag, there's an occasional, I'm pretty sure I pressed that button but it doesn't react kind of thing. But that's natural. Most phones that are touch do that. This phone does not come with a micro SD card, which it does take micro SD cards up to 32 gigabytes in size. It does, however, come with 16 gigabytes of onboard memory, which is nice. So that's all internal. Uh, in English, if you didn't understand that, it comes preloaded with 16 gigabytes of space for you to use for photos, contacts, videos, music, whatever you need. But I recommend that you go out and get a micro SD card and put it in here. I was lucky enough to still have my micro SD card left over from my Droid X, so I just took it out of there and stuck it in here, and uh, that sounded really dirty and wrong. Of course, the phone is 3G capable. Now, uh, one of the big things that a lot of people are talking about is 4G. Uh, the Droid 3 is not 4G capable, sadly, um, but it does the job at 3G. It can also act as a 3G mobile hotspot, which of course, depending on what plan you have, is gonna cost you possibly 20 bucks extra, or 30 on top of your current contract with Verizon. The phone also comes pre-installed with Android's new 2.3 gingerbread software, uh, OS, which is actually the OS that made me have problems on my Droid X. Now, one of the things a lot of people are harking on this phone for is the fact that it has only 512 megabytes of RAM. Most new smartphones nowadays, especially the Droids, are starting to install one gigabyte of RAM. But you know what? Guess what also has 512 megabytes of RAM? Yes, the iPhone 4, and that thing runs just perfectly. Now, one of the things that actually kind of bugs me, and this is just a side note tidbit, is uh, a, lo a lot like the Droid X2, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, like, a lot like the Droid X2 and a lot of the other newer Android phones, the dedicated camera button, which would normally go here, has been removed, which can actually make taking photos a lot more difficult. I learned a little bit of a workaround that can try and help you uh, take better photos that are a little bit easier, uh, and it's kind of a makeshift faux, I guess you could call it, camera button. So you just open up the camera software, and as you can see right here, there is your shutter button, which is what you're gonna use to take photos. If you're trying to take a photo of yourself, maybe from MySpace, you're holding it like this, or maybe you're trying to take a photo of you and your group of friends and you wanna hold the phone like this or like that, 
It can be very difficult to see where your finger is so that way you can actually press the button. You're playing a freaking guess game, uh, essentially is what you're doing. What I learned you can do is flip the phone up, the OK button right there, or even the enter button works just fine. If you take one of those keys and hold it down, that will act as your designated camera button, which is really nice. So let's uh, let's just say that I have a group of friends around me and we're all excited, maybe we're drinking, having fun. So what you do is very carefully hold the camera. And what do you know, my ugly face is on that camera right there. Now of course when you're doing that, you're gonna wanna be careful, you don't wanna drop the phone. Uh, perhaps you should only attempt something like this if you have good insurance. Now should you upgrade to this phone now? That is a very big and important question. Depending on what phone you have now, if you have something like the first Droid and you're looking to upgrade, the Droid 3 is perfect for you. You're gonna be exactly at home with the software, uh, the way the phone handles and looks. But if you're like me and you weren't really quite sure um, and you wanted a dedicated keyboard, then the Droid 3 is probably the perfect choice for you. But I wanted something that actually gave me keys so that way I could feel a little bit more accurate with my text or even web surfing. So if you're the kind of person that couldn't care less about a QWERTY keyboard, you may want to wait on the Droid 3 and actually get the Droid Bionic, which is supposed to come out sometime this month. And it's actually supposed to be what some people are calling the second coming of Android phones and a direct rival to the iPhone 4, possibly iPhone 5. So if you want a QWERTY keyboard and a phone that works well and it's responsive most of the time and uh, it runs well, the Droid 3 is not a bad choice. Because in the world of technology, there's always something new coming out. There's always going to be something better. Uh, no matter what you do, no matter what you get. So like I said, it's a very good solid phone. I'm enjoying it a lot so far. Um, if you want a physical keyboard, you cannot go wrong with the Droid 3. If you couldn't care less about the physical keyboard and just want a touch screen only, you're probably best on waiting for the Android's new phone, the Droid Bionic. So uh, yeah, that's the review. I am Curious Corduroy. If you guys like the video, click the like button below. If you wanna subscribe, subscribe. I do other things, I review technology with my buddies, I do gameplay commentaries for Call of Duty, and I do uh, fighting game shows with my friend Lorenzo. But yeah, I'm Curious Corduroy. I'll talk to you guys later, and uh, yeah, I'm just gonna go spend some alone time with uh, Miss Allison Hayslip, uh, because I, I really like her a lot, and she's very sexy. Yeah, I'll talk to you guys later. Just can't wait, can't wait, can't wait